Welcome to Sculpture Studios. Creating some interactive pieces here for a school up in Lincoln. The Hartsholm Academy is a primary school that's a pioneer in a different style of learning. If you were to visit as we were asked to do, you'd find very few school chairs or writing desks or much furniture at all that you would usually consider to be the norm in a children's classroom. It's unlike any institute that I've ever been in, with each room having a different theme, a different feel, and a variety of objects for the children to immerse themselves with. For this project, we've been asked by teacher Amy Smith to create some large trees to adorn the entrance to one of the larger school rooms. In addition to these trees, we're going to be making some acorn pods for small children to sit inside. It was useful to visit the site where the trees would be situated, as we needed to evaluate where the sculptures would fix to the wall, and anything that exists on the wall already that we'd need to work around. Starting with the acorns, unfortunately we couldn't find a tree with acorns big enough for us to hollow out, so we're just going to have to create our own from scratch. Our large block of polystyrene is first hot wire cut down to size, and an outline template of the acorn is being used around the clock to create a rough form. This is being carved by hand for that organic look, using wire brushes, stonemason rifflers, and sandpapers to smoothen the shape down. Here, Jess is going over with a water-based plaster filler. We get a lot of questions about this product, it's a household plaster filler that you can probably buy from home construction stores like we do in large tubs. You apply this on quite thin and it air dries and you can sand this back for a smoother finish. For us it's the perfect way to lose that polystyrene bead texture in order to prepare this for a mould. No it's not particularly strong to reinforce the sculpture with, it's more for aesthetics and so is this. The plaster filler is sanded back and reapplied where we need to do a little more work and the entrance to the acorn is being carved out. To save unnecessary cost for the client, we're not going to be creating an internal mould so we don't need to hollow the whole shape out and we're only cutting it in by a few inches. We're going over with a water based paint and a filler mix for its final finish before moulding and by going with the grain lines that have already been created, the brush strokes simply add to the acorn effect. Once the plaster and paint has dried, we go over with a PVA blue release agent before going over with glass fibre and resin to create the mould. The mould has been made in several sections so that we can extract the cast easily and these mould walls can all be bolted together. Once this has been created, we extract the polystyrene pattern and we proceed to nice Jess, nice, nice, and we proceed to clean up the interior of the mould. What we're doing is improving the final outcome finish of the job during every step of the process. Once again we go over with a PVA blue release agent, and that's the blue you can see on the glass fibre here. And as this is an inside installation and will have a captive audience, this needs to be fire rated. So for this job we're using a class O rated resin. All the pieces are trimmed nice and neat, removing any excess material. And these are then joined together on the inside with more glass fibre. The seam lines then need to be cleaned up, so the acorn looks like a completely sealed single unit. This whole process is then repeated so that we end up with two identical fiberglass casts. When the acorns are sanded and ready for painting, we go over with a grey primer and then colour over the top. As the kids are bound to be touching these and climbing in and out, for this job we're using 2K car body paints for a nice strong finish. At this point we're only going over with dusty layers as this is just a base layer for the airbrush work going on top. Here we have Gary working on the detail, creating a more natural finish and working with the existing grain lines. As a little bonus for Amy and the children at the school, we've also created these little mushroom stools. Made in a similar fashion from a mould and airbrush detail, these should look great alongside the other woodland theming. With the inside of the acorns being raw fibreglass, we've made sure to sand the complete interior down so there are no sharp points. As the kids are going to be climbing in and out of these, these need to be safe to handle and safe for them to touch and lean against, so we've gone inside with a flow coat of resin for a much smoother finish. 
we've also got wait a minute what's Aiden doing here we know you've been working on something else while the acorn making has been going on so let's go and take a look Aiden's begun work on the two half trees that are going to stand either side of the corridor. They need to leave enough room for a walkway in between them, so they're only going to be half trees that are flat against the wall. The canopy above on the other hand needs to be nice and full, so these will need to be busy and overlap one another. Aiden's carving two similar trees from polystyrene, using hot wire cutters to get rid of the bulk, and going to work with nail and wire brushes to add detail to the tree trunk. This will all be covered in a secretly sore sticky back tinfoil as a protective barrier and once again class O resin for fire rating. All the branches are being cut out and carved and adhered onto the rest of the tree body using a PU expanding foam. To make sure these trees are nice and strong, we put in some metal armature into the branches. This is so that they can withstand a bit of manipulation if the children get a little too grabby when the trees are on location. As these are presumably going to be touched far less than the acorns, we're using emulsion paints for this and we're going over the detail that we've created in a dry concrete mix. As well as installing all the smaller branches by drilling holes and using a PU foam once again, we're adding some metal work to the back of the trees so they can be fixed securely to the wall and there's no movement whatsoever. We've ordered about 2,000 fake leaves to add as foliage at the top, but after seeing how much coverage this provides, or how much little coverage it provides over such a large area, we've decided to order another 2,000 more. We've gone for coloured autumn leaves for the second batch, just to give a bit more vibrancy to the sculptures. Here are the acorns arriving on site proudly being modelled by one of the older children at the school, so it's safe to say that anyone younger, and presumably smaller, will fit quite comfortably. We'd like to thank Amy Smith for finding us online and approaching us with the project, and we feel privileged that our work has helped to add to this flagship of a school, and we welcome any future projects. We hope the children at the Hartsholm Academy enjoy their new scenery, and more importantly, learn from watching this video that sculptures don't simply grow on trees, bit of a corny joke for you and I'm gonna leave it there as there isn't much room for any more. Please feel free to leave any comments below as they're always appreciated and hit the subscribe button for our latest videos. You can like Sculpture Studios on Facebook and follow at Aidan Hines on Twitter and for more of our work visit sculpturestudios.co.uk. Thank you very much for watching.